It is very important to realize that none of this would be possible if schools and the media, especially the media, would just explain what is happening rather than lying to you. Mass media outlets, that's the televised media, you know them as ABC and NBC, CBS and Fox, are owned by media conglomerates. That is, they each answer to a parent company. ABC, for example, is owned by the Walt Disney Corporation. NBC by GE and Microsoft. CNN by AOL Time Warner. CBS by Viacom. Fox News, if you even want that to count, by the Rupert Murdoch Corporation. News reports get dictated from the top down and avoid issues such as Israel, the Niger forgeries, APAC spiring, the Office of Special Plans, North American Union, Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission, Bank of International Settlements, MEGA, Project for New American Century, White House Iraq Group, Military Industrial Complex, IASPA, American Enterprise Institute, Defense Policy Board's Misgivings, the American Turkish Council, Bilderberg, and anything to do with 9-11 and anything to do with the lies about the Iraq War, post and pre-invasion. Mass media conglomerates are part of the military industrial complex. If you look at their board of directorates, they have overlapping membership with the largest aerospace companies in key multinational defense industries, all which profit handsomely from the budget of the Defense Department. Government employees, as well as these board of director members, all profit through privately held equity firms which engage in insider trading and a variety of immoral corporate profiteering, usually through war. America spends more of its tax money on defense than the rest of the world put together. Over 52% of our discretionary taxes are spent on offense, which they call defense. But it's more than that. America borrows money from the Federal Reserve, money printed out of thin air, new money, and uses that to pay for defense. So the greater portion of our taxes plus borrowed money, which causes massive inflation, all goes into the pockets of these war pigs in the military industrial complex. And it's not just the Department of Defense, it's several departments. It's the Department of Defense, it's the Department of State, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Energy. They're all tied to the MIC. It is the greatest umbrella corporation in the world, and it has to be stopped. Military Keynesianism, the military industrial complex, the devotion of massive resources, to the military has unintended consequences that we refuse to, uh, to acknowledge. That we are now spending close to a trillion dollars a year, that's a thousand billion, on our military establishment. This is not the defense appropriation that is published. That's, that's simply the annual appropriation of the Department of Defense. It doesn't include the money spent on nuclear weapons, that's in the Department of Energy. It doesn't include the money spent on uh, Veterans Affairs, that's in the Department of Veterans Affairs, including treating our uh, uh, wounded from Iraq. It uh, doesn't include uh, foreign military aid, that's in the State Department. It doesn't include the actual defense of the country, that's the Department of Homeland Security. Since after 9-11 we discovered the Department of Defense has nothing to do with defense of the country. It's, uh, it's busying itself with warfare in outer space or some other. Uh, lucrative, if useless, way to spend money. Uh, it all adds up to an unbelievable amount that is, um, over time, not sustainable. It reminds us of a famous remark by um, Herbert Stein when he was chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors in, uh, in Richard Nixon's administration. He rather famously said, things that can't go on forever don't. Uh, these things can't go on forever. And they're not going to. That is, the American empire could come to an end before this film is over if just one little thing happened. If Saudi Arabia decided that it wanted to be paid for its oil in euros instead of dollars, why should we be concerned about imperialism and militarism? It's a suicide pact. That's the way empires end. The U.S. is always at war or part of some conflict. And it doesn't matter if you rename a war a police action or whatever. It's a war. The point of war for the U.S. is not to win, but to prolong. In order to operate, the MIC needs conflicts. 
Perpetual war is their openly stated goal. Perpetual war means perpetual profits. Ultimately, they aim to monopolize vital resources, destroy potential economic or military rivals, devalue currencies to wipe out the middle class, and rule with impunity as corporate oligarchs in a globalized shadow government. Sorry for the black screen, but I have to censor the war images from Iraq and Afghanistan for YouTube, which is unfortunate because I believe it's really important for people to see the faces of war and to see the true horror of war, to understand it on an emotional level, because there's too much detachment, too much cognitive dissidence. With the profitable Cold War over and hundreds of billions in security fraud and a network of mediums to obfuscate off-the-books financing for covert and illegal operations under investigation, an event was needed to cover the old crimes and create the atmosphere for new ones. This wasn't for America or solely by American elements. It was multinational. Showing that 9-11 was done and why it was done and who covered it up isn't the same as how it was done. We've seen airplanes and truck bombs, but what about the other explosions higher up in the towers? If bombs were inside, how could they be set in there with so many employees working in the towers? And who did it? You can forget about security, that's a non-issue. But exactly how and where could one place charges without anyone noticing? A good place to start would be the men arrested for fake IDs that granted them access to the towers to fix sprinkler systems, upgrade internet cables, move out furniture, and work on chronically broken elevators, especially when the Israeli-owned company they claimed to work for had no authenticity. Movers bring the goods, elevator and cable mechanics set them in place, maintenance shuts down the fire prevention system. Quick three-step plan. Any sense at all, have you heard anything, even anecdotally, from the cops about how many people managed to get out of the building before they collapsed? No, absolutely not. But. There is also, I don't know if it was the case now, but I do know that one of the, of the towers had a major elevator that went all the way to the top that was malfunctioning and has been malfunctioning for uh, at least a month. They've been having a lot of trouble with that. The details of that story and my investigation into it are on my website. Yeah, that's right. I'm making you go to my website. I get something out of making this film. All of this should have and could have been in more press, but aside from the tight control over the broadcast news by the Pentagon, in the immediate post-9-11 atmosphere, it was sacrilegious to question anything. The press creates the narrative, no matter how silly, by repetition and repetition. The news is highly filtered and controlled. These people are normally just talking bobbleheads reading teleprompters and sticking to daily talking points issued from the top down. By repeating uniform catchphrases simultaneously across the media spectrum, they create a limbing effect. But ABC and NBC, CBS and Fox don't really differ. They usually have the same exact stories, often in the same order with the same catchphrases. They are trying to lead you to think the way they are told to tell you to think. It pays to lie. William Crystal, despite being wrong about everything, gets a job at the New York Times. Judith Miller, despite having gone to jail for 85 days for some of her lies, gets hired by Fox News. And Paul Wolfowitz, the idiot who said that Iraq's oil revenue would pay for the cost of the war within two years, gets rewarded for that economic blunder by being appointed head of the World Bank. The following FBI agents who screwed up or covered up investigations into anthrax and into the 9-11 hijackers got promotions. But you can imagine that we are being uh, manipulated the, the by a tiny minority in a global game of theft and murder of our fellow man. We, all of us, are being robbed daily by the military central banking financial system. We don't have to live this way. And we don't need our resources allocated by a central supercomputer or any other glorified high-tech communism. That is not a solution, and it is not realistic. One massive contributor to the debt for defense racket that allows this to take place on the scale that it does is central banking on a fiat money system. 
The other main method of manipulation is mass media. We've got to end the Fed and abandon the daily deceptions of the mainstream media. And slowly, this is happening and has been happening. For one of the first times in history, we have a way of fighting back. The web has allowed us to break the media monopoly. We are seeing anti-Fed rallies, books, and films when this was nearly impossible before. There is a niche for anti-war info to counter propaganda. Now is the time to end the cycle. Everything stems from alternative media. Every year we grow. The problems in government and banking won't be fixed until we take back the media. This is why it is vital to keep the web free and open. It's also crucial to support alternative media websites. These people are not paid and they face a lot of flack. Just ignore the kooks. We are winning this struggle. In the deceptions and in the wars. Thank you for watching my film. Please see all the extras on the DVD or wherever I put them on the web. I thank you to everyone who is helping support me by sharing this film and a handful of you who sent some donations so it was possible to eat this film. No more wars for deception. No more Zionist neocon plans. Don't listen to them about Iran. Israel got caught just in 2002, the Zim shipping company which moved out of the WTC just weeks before the attacks got busted sending armaments to Iran. Isn't that a little fishy? The same things are going on still. It's crucial we all understand this and put a stop to it. We are the majority. We can take our nation back. It's our government. It's our media. We are responsible for this. Some of you people elected Obama. I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't know why you believed that he would change anything. This generic sloganeering of hope, change, belief is utter nonsense. He was a senator. He had a voting record. You could have known exactly how he really was. It's too late now. Let's focus on the positive and fix what we can. I appreciate your support. Have a nice day. Here are my websites for future reference.